What's good? It's your girl back at it again with hair that's staticky and uh, temperature of negative 55 degrees tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Okay, so <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit crazy from this climate. So uh, that's the mood for the finale of my one week one palette series. And when I said it's going to be negative 55 degrees, I'm not joking, bitch. It's going to be negative 55 degrees. That was neither here nor there. I just thought I would mention that because I can't believe it. But I also can't believe it because Chicago weather is... L listen, every person that lives in Chicago is going to talk about Chicago weather at some point because it's going to be negative 55 tomorrow, but then next week it's going to be 41. So, like 41 degrees, not negative 41. It Anyways... <laughs> All I ask for is some consistency in my life. <laughs> it's the finale. It's the final day of this week-long series, and um, it's been a doozy. It's been a fun but crazy doozy of a ride. So for the final look, I realize that I haven't really played around with this color all over my lid. At least I don't think I have. You know, it becomes a blur <laughs> at some point. So I think I'm going to put this color right here on the lid, um, this one on the outer corners, do a little bit of something with this purple, like, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna create something. So, you know, you know what it is, got the primer on the lids, let's, let's go. All right, lads, so, uh, taking the usual, you know, the huge, this lilac color as my transition. You know, it's nothing new. We've been doing this for a week now. And now I'm taking that pinkish color up top here, all over the eyelid itself. So that color on its own, I haven't used it all by itself. I've only used it in like, you know, little accent things like um, putting it over the crease or like under the eyes, but I haven't used it all over the lid. And this is such a nice color. It builds on itself really well and it looks pretty smooth overall. I didn't, you know, there's not any kind of patchiness or it's not really difficult to work with either, which is awesome. I also have mascara smudged under my eyes. So uh, jot that down. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, now I'm going to go in with a small fluffy crease brush. Oh, if I don't drop it on the floor, I'm taking the darkest color, darkest matte color called Sleeper, which is indeed a pressed pigment. So I'm going to work with this kind of carefully, but I'm focusing this color on the outer portion. And in my typical upwards fashion um, towards the eyebrow, setting that placement down. You know what? We're going to do a halo eye. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So taking that color on the outer part and then also on the inner part here. Okay, now I'm going to dust off some kick up and put that transition color through the crease one more time. Okay, now I'm going to take that same pink and that same dark purple, you can't even see that, the same pink and the same dark purple and do a halo on the bottom part too. And actually now in the center of the bottom halo, like under the eyes. I think I'm going to take this color in the middle here called Earthshine. My camera battery died. I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted, that I'm going to take this color Earthshine and put that in between the two darker parts of the halo under my eyes.
and I think I'm going to do the same thing on the upper parts. But I don't want to take away from the pink that's up there, so I'm just going to put this in the very, um, very center of the lid, closest to the lash line. And then I'm also going to take that same color and put that on my inner corners. And then I'm just going to blend out over the edges once more to try to make sure that everything is as, you know, cute and blended as possible. And for the finale, I'm as, <laughs> as I have been. I'm going to put more mascara on and then I will return. Okay, so for the lip color, I'm taking this ultra glossy, ultra sparkly, lip gloss from Anastasia. This is in the color Pink Tourmaline. And I'm just going to put that over my bare naked lips. And then over top of that, I'm going to take that same color that I put in the center of my lids and under my eyes. And I'm just going to put that in the center of my lips too, making everything very central. This is the finished look. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see the eyes. And let's have a conversation. Let's talk. Um, how's it going? How are you doing? <laughs> so let's break this down. This palette has, I was about to say 12. <laughs> It's a common theme here. It's part of my brand. I can't count. This has nine eyeshadows. And I would say that you get a couple of pressed glitters, some metallic shimmers here, uh, you know, these two mattes, and then you get a pressed pigment. This color right here is kind of the oddball of the bunch because it performs similarly to the mattes, but it has a bunch of gold glitter in it too which doesn't really show up on the lids, so I guess you can kind of consider it the odd one out of these shades, but I think that this is a nice mix of matte and then shimmer. I think that they probably could have done without the sparkles in this one and have this be part of the transition shades, because really I found myself using this one exclusively for the transition through the crease, and it's fine and it works and it helped to blend things very well, but I do believe that if this didn't have the amount of glitter that it has in it, it would have been a lot easier to make it a part of the transitional family. So that way you have two mattes that you can use like on their own or as add-ons, and then two transitions that would work to blend out eyeshadows. And then you've got, you know, your assortment of metallics and glitters and shimmers. This palette retails for $12 and ColourPop always has some sort of sale promotion deal going on, like, I feel like every other week. So you could definitely get this for probably cheaper or free shipping or something like that, like some sort of value to it. Not that it's not a good value on its own. I feel like it's very decently priced for what you're getting. Now, in terms of the wear, um, I would say that this lasts about eight hours quite well before... I noticed creasing. Again, the one time that I did have the creasing, I wasn't exactly sure if it was because of the cream eyeshadow, but I would say that that had played a part in why it creased, because as a whole, these shadows perform quite well on my lids, and I just used the Urban Decay Primer Potion. That's like my standard eyeshadow primer, and it wears well. I don't notice any kind of fading or anything of that sort. The mattes here perform very well. I mean, when I used this all over the lid, it was great. I didn't notice any kind of patchiness. When I put this all over my lid today, it was great. Buildable, no patchiness. This one I did struggle with, and I mentioned that I think in, was it yesterday's video or the day before? But this eyeshadow is like a pressed pigment. It's like the Anastasia Subculture palette, where it has a lot of color, a lot of impact, but because it's a little bit more dry, and it is a pressed pigment, it can be a little more challenging to blend out and work with, though you can make it work and look nice. And I think purples are one of the harder colors in the makeup world, makeup pigment world, to perfect just because of 
I'm guessing the way that they're supposed to be formulated and how the pigment will come through. It's not as easy as some other shades. Um, generally purple tends to be a drier eyeshadow as well. So, but with that being said, I feel like they did a really great job with this formulation. I don't think that it's bad in any sort of way. I think that the colors in here are quite unique for a monochromatic purple and the shimmers in here are very beautiful. This color right here, Earthshine, has honestly been the shining star of the palette because of its versatility. I mean, you can wear this on its own for a really, really vibrant electric look, or you can pair it on top of this purple like I have and create this like, I, I mentioned it as like an activated purple, like radioactive, really bright, really um, stunning. And I love that these colors have nuances to them too. It's not just like a flat purple or like a purple metallic chrome whatever. Like it has some dimension and has some multi-chromatic glitter, some blue, some violet. It's very interesting and I think that for something that's so reasonably priced that that's quite a feat. That's that's good. That's impressive. Now these do have some kick up as well. I, a lot of these points I've hit on already but this is sort of like a roundup summary. These do have a bit of kick up when you dip your brush in, especially with the matte shades. I don't get bothered by things like that, so you know, you just blow the palette off and it's fine. And in terms of fallout, ever since that first look that I did, I haven't really noticed much fallout since. The darkest color, the darkest matte, and the darkest purple here, this royal one, do give a little bit of fallout, but I think that's because of the nature of them being dark colors, you know, like they tend to have fallout. It's nothing crazy, it's not anything that's like, oh my god, I have to redo everything. But, you know, just, just heed caution. <laughs> Be careful with your placement, and it's fine. It really isn't anything that dramatic. So in terms of colors that I wasn't a fan of, I wasn't really a fan of this color, I have to say, Mr. Sandman. I just found it to be kind of a weird color that didn't really work that well. Like, it's too dark to be put in the center of the lid as like a highlight color. On its own, it's just so-so. And then I tried using it wet, which by the way, these shimmers don't really perfor perform that well wet, so <laughs> jot that down. But performed wet, this was just like bleh. So in terms of duds, this one's not that great. And the gold glitter in here kind of trips this color up and doesn't make it that versatile in my opinion. While I do love this palette and I've enjoyed the functionality of it and playing with these colors, I did find myself in the end kind of struggling to put together a look just using the palette by itself. I think this is, this is how, who I would recommend this for. I would recommend this as a supplemental palette to things that you already have and of course using it with glitters and really is stretching it out to its maximum creative capacity because I really wanted to use just this palette on its own and see how it performs and I'm really satisfied with the way that it performed but towards the end I felt like I was kind of reaching a brick wall um, just using these shadows by themselves without any sort of external colors or glitters or bases you know um, I do think that it's better paired with other things. And that's why I feel like this would be such a rich addition to one's makeup collection because the possibilities will be endless <laughs> when you have this paired with like a blue or a green or, you know, different colors, neutrals, glitters, like, oh my god, this is such an ace palette for that because the purples in here are stunning and they shine and they work so well on their own, but also in conjunction with other things, it's like, oh, oh, you know, it's over for you hoes. Like, it just works so well. So, for example, right, I'm just gonna plug some more Colourpop here. <laughs> oh, oh, Colourpop, <laughs> whenever you feel ready to send me that check, you let me know. <laughs> but, I've got the Good Sport palette, which I've also did a one week, one palette video series on my channel, which you, you <laughs> I'll link down below, you can check that out. <laughs> but I think that this palette, right, it has some more mattes in here, some purples here, some neutral, like, orangey tones, and then let's just say that this is an extension. 
Um, so many possibilities. You've got some extra purples to play with. You've got some more shimmers, greens, like you can do that, right? Or let's say with the brown sugar palettes, you can have this neutral and then this purple. And also, oh, drop it and have one of the eyeshadows fall out. Awesome. Radical. Easy fix, though. Anyway. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a good additional palette to things that you might already have. In conclusion, I highly recommend this palette. And I think that it takes more than just an hour's worth of working with a palette to really see how you feel about it. Because I feel like if I would have just used this palette once, I would have been like, oh my god, it's amazing. And while it is really good, there were some faults with it. There were some uh, slight setbacks and adjustments that needed to be made with some of these colors. And, you know, it's better to come to a more accurate conclusion about how they actually perform, what the textures are like when you actually have some time to play with it. I wouldn't have known that this color is kind of a dud or that this doesn't really work that well as a transition. There isn't an infinite amount of possibilities that you can do with these colors on their own, but when you pair it with other things, it's it's like Pandora's box. So that's why I like doing these videos, and that's why I feel like it's interesting for me to know with other people's content and with other people's videos that they make, if they've tried something and they do an update on it. I like that because then you get a better rounded view of how something works. I hope you enjoyed this series and this video and you found this helpful or beneficial. Maybe I'm like a micro influencer and you got the palette. <laughs> and if you did, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments section. And this concludes my one week one palette series. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Ciao.